says, for some background, I'm 33 and my wife Kate is 32. We've been married for eight years. We have one child together who's three years old, who was unplanned but not unwelcome. You got married when you were 25 and she was 24 and it wasn't because she was pregnant or anything like that. Smack, way too early, way too soon. What was the rush? When my wife found out she was pregnant, it obviously came to a surprise to us. She'd been taking birth control ever since we started dating, since we agreed that we were not financially ready to have a kid. However, after being married for five years and advancing our careers, we felt like we could make it work. Thus, we decided to keep the child and began planning for the next phase of our lives. Okay, great. I mean, at the end of the day, you've been married all those years and the kid's on the way. Of course, you keep it, for goodness sake. But notice he said, yeah, I've been taking the birth control since we started dating, but amazing how it just didn't work when she's getting close to 30. Do you know how many couples I know, guys I've been friends with, acquainted with, who had their girlfriend, and once she got to her early to mid-30s, who I know darn well wanted children, magically the birth control didn't work? Isn't that interesting? And all those guys, with the exception of one, married the girl. You can all debate that one, guys. Uh, prior to Kate getting pregnant, she worked as a waitress at a local restaurant, making just above minimum wage once tips were factored in. On the other hand, I'm a construction worker who makes two to three times more than her at the time. We lived in a decent apartment, but we agreed that we need a real house to have the space for our child, so we began looking for our first home. Now listen to all this, what we're about to get into. <clears throat> During that process, and Kate and as Kate's pregnancy went further along, she quit her job to focus on preparing for the baby. We found a house that we liked, but it was more expensive than I was hoping for. Here we go. They could have raised the child in an apartment. They could have gotten, say they were, in, they were in a one bedroom apartment. They could have gotten a two bedroom apartment temporarily. Hopefully they're friends with the neighbors, you know, because you want to disturb the neighbors with a crying baby. But as opposed to buying a house, that was way more than what he could afford. And let's not forget, other things involved, like uh, come down with, which after you purchase the house, or early on, the property insurance, homeowner's insurance, maybe flood insurance, depending where you live, the property taxes, and all the other things that tend to happen when you own a house. You homeowners know what I'm talking about here. These are things that a lot of people don't anticipate. And then getting something that's more expensive, that's going to cause problems. And whose idea was this? Her idea. I make good money working construction, but having to fund two people, a new mortgage, and buy all the supplies a baby needs is not easy. I began putting in more hours at work to be able to afford everything, resulting in me being able to spend less time at home with my wife. Let's remember this. Yes, more expensive than he expected. I'm sure there's surprises with repairs and renovations at the house. You all know what I'm talking about, you homeowners. And a lot of people get surprised on what they have to pay for property taxes and the insurance if the insurance gets hiked. People in Florida know I'm talking about, about, about that. But it's all on him, but he's doing it because that's what she wanted. Therefore, less time with her. I, I really am hitting this home here that he was doing what she wanted. The baby finally comes and he's a healthy little boy. Congratulations, Papa. I couldn't be more proud. But once he was born, Kate began to change. She was more tired and stressed out having to care for a newborn, which I don't blame her at all. Well, I don't blame her. Newborns are fucking exhausting. Babies, kids are exhausting. But again, I know kids are a lot of work. I essentially had to raise my little brother who was 10 years younger than me growing up. However, Kate would also complain that I wasn't around very often and that when I was at home, I'd, I wouldn't help with the baby as much as she thought I should. I explained to her that to be able to afford the house, the baby, and the two of us by myself, I had to put a lot of extra hours in at work. And when I came home every day, I'm exhausted. I lift heavy shit for a living, and I'm lucky to be able to make it through the day without breaking my back, being terribly sore. So, she wanted that house, which he didn't want to get, but he did it for her. She no longer works, and don't get me wrong, she's raising that baby, and that's a lot of work and exhausting. And he's busting his tail. And he says later on, six days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, heavy labor. And now she's mad because he's not around as much. Well, I could be home and make less money and can't pay the bills. Or, you see, you see this guy can't win here? You see how irrational this whole thing is with her? 
Still, I tried to help out more. I changed diapers where I could, fed the baby where I could, etc. The one thing I refused to do was get up in the middle of the night, which is something I know upsets her. My reasoning is that I'm barely getting five hours of sleep a night, and if I get any less, I'm going to get utter wreck on the job. If that happens and I get less hours or even fired, we're financially screwed. You're damn right. If this guy's working six days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, lifting heavy shit, exhausting back-breaking work to provide and pay for this house that she wanted, I think that two-bedroom apartment would have been a better idea at this point. Then you're darn right she can get her ass up in the middle of the night and be and deal with it. As time went on, we kept make, making it work, and eventually things got less crazy and stressful. The older the kid gets, the less constant attention and work he needs from us. That is not saying caring for a toddler is easy. But it's easier than caring for an infant who can't sleep throughout the night. Two months ago, Kate suggested she get a regular job again and that we use the extra income to pay for a nanny and, in general, help with the expenses. I agreed because I was exhausted and the idea of being able to put in less overtime sounded great. You're goddamn right she can freaking get a job at this point. And, by the way, you, you're all thinking like I did when I read this, a nanny, um, that's pretty expensive. I'll eventually clarify, it's not a nanny, it's like the neighbor's girl who's in high school babysitting which is a better deal because the girl can work, bring the extra money, and they're still making money off that. Make that clear. Fast forward to last night, and Kate was, was working as a cashier for six weeks now. We hired the nanny, and the money situation isn't nearly as tight. I was able to work less, though with Kate working now, I'm not able to see her in the mornings, which is usually when I would see her due to how my shifts work. I thought things were going great until Kate sits me down last night to have a conversation. Shouldn't it be him sitting her down to have a conversation given the guy who's been busting his ass all this time? Well, let's listen to this bullshit going on. She admitted to me that there's a guy at work who's been flirting with her, despite knowing she's married. He's funny, easygoing, handsome, etc. So you all know, well, most of you know, that when a woman suddenly starts talking about some other guy a lot in a complimentary way, that's her pretty much telling you this is your replacement if you, in her view, don't get your act together. She said that he asked if she was available to go on a date behind my back. Okay, in other words, cheat on her husband. And though she said she, no, she was, she was, and he quotes, sorely tempted to say yes. Uh, excuse me, honey? This blindsided me then, but now that I've had a day to think about it, I think I can see how this happened. She said she was sorely tempted to cheat on her, to un cheat on him, right there to his face. Oh hell no! We have this house here because I did it for you, because that's what you said you wanted. I've been busting my ass all these years because to help get this house for you, and now because I'm not around, giving the attention that you need, the attention and validation. Now you're saying that uh, this guy's hitting on you at work. Showing, telling me who my replacement is and you were sorely tempted to cheat on me because I've been, you know, living up to being the great husband? Well, kiss my ass. She was always upset that I wasn't home very often, wasn't there to help and support her with the kid, and so on. Isn't it amazing? Always the guy's the bad guy. The guy can't win. You all know this. There's no making him happy. If he's around more often, not bringing enough money, he's not bringing enough money, she's not happy. If he's busting his butt bringing the money, he's not around all the time to give her attention, she's not happy. Our current arrangement allowed me to have more energy when I came home, but since she leaves her work in the morning before I wake up, the actual duration of time I see her each day has shrunk even further. Then I have an idea. She gets a fucking job and has it during the time he's working. Not rocket science here. Or how about this? Well, this isn't working, and if we can sell the house at a profit, you never know, depending on where they live, to cover everything like, you know, with, with, with the, the closing costs that we spent and all that type of stuff, then maybe we, we downsize. But it, what's, work, what's going on isn't working. I think the reason she was tempted by this guy at work is that he's giving her the attention she wants from me. I can understand that, but it also pissed me off. You have every right to have it pissed off, be pissed off, dude. Frankly, I've been busting my ass for three years to afford a child, the house that she wanted, and her ability to be a stay-at-home mom. I've been working 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week to afford this, and she's tempted by some guy at work after knowing him for six weeks. I felt betrayed more than I ever had before. You're goddamn right. Our guy here has a right to be pissed off about this and feel betrayed, because she is. Now, maybe she hasn't done anything yet, but the fact that she was said what she said, 
I asked to see her phone and she gave it to me without resistance. I went through all her contacts, deleted messages, everything, and I didn't find anything suspicious. I don't believe she actually cheated on and is only pretending to be tempted, but I suppose it's possible. She generally seemed remorseful during our conversation, but that didn't make it feel any better. I told her in the heat of the moment that I want a divorce and this caused her to break down in tears and beg me to stay. Hey, bitch, you bluff me, I'm going to bluff you. Or at the very least, you're going to say that, I'm going to say something back. Amazing how when the guy starts toughening up, the waterworks begins. Hey, you know what? The extreme case here, and I know how this whole whole story is going to go, is simply she was being highly emotional, highly irrational, not that as an excuse, and didn't intend to cheat on him, but was, you know, trying to rattle his cage. Even though, guess what? If anybody's raising Casey's rattling, it's hers. She asked if I would tear a family apart over just the idea of her cheating. And I threw her words back at her in her face and said, I was sorely tempted. <laughs> How about the fact that she was going to tear the family apart about the, about because the whole she's not getting enough attention, even though he's doing everything she claimed she wanted. I then went, went to bed and ignored her attempts to get, back, get me to talk since I had to work today. The work that has kept our family afloat for the last three years, and more if you want to count the five years spent making three times more than her. <sighs> I thought about this all day today, and I'm not sure what to do. I can't get over the idea of my wife going to cheat with the first man she's spending any extended time with in three years. She asked me if I was going to throw it all away over a feeling, but she was going to do the same damn thing with the guy from work. I love how she twists around like he's the bad guy here. She's angry that I got angry at her in the moment, but I think I have good reason to be furious. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. Yeah, you're both in a tough situation when you're not seeing each other very much, and money's tight, and you had a newborn, and that toddler. Yeah, that's tough. I don't have children, let me make this abundantly clear. I don't know what that's like, but I have enough friends and family that had babies and toddlers and little kids and all that, and I know how goddamn exhausted they were, how often money was tight, and there was frustration and all that, but eventually they worked together. I've seen people not work together. I've seen people work together, and even the ones that work together... It's a challenge, but they don't pull this shit, at least to my knowledge. He says, after reading through many comments here, I've decided I'm going to have a thorough conversation with my wife before taking any harsh action like divorce. I feel, or maybe, that I just hope that there's still a chance for us to be happy and healthy together despite everything that's happened. In other words, he's not ready to break up the family just yet, but uh, she's getting a talking to. For starters, I'm going to tell her how I truly feel about this, not just what I was thinking in the heat of the moment when she told me about what's happening with the guy from work. It fucking hurts to know that my wife was sorely tempted by some stranger as she met six weeks ago after being married for eight years and having a son together. I busted my ass literally and figuratively to be able to afford everything, and I feel like she hasn't been appreciating that. She's not. I understand that she's been busy at home taking care of the kid, but if we were to trade jobs for a day, I highly suspect she would change her tune regarding the division of work and effort that we've been putting in. I agree. And I'm sure if they switched roles, particularly when there was a baby involved, he would say, yeah, it's tough for her. But I don't think this guy ever, for a second, made it look like that she wasn't doing any work or it wasn't hard. I think he knew darn well babies are tough. But guess what? So is his fucking job. Also, I plan to tell her that I want her to quit her job immediately. Even if she wasn't tempted at all, I don't want her around that type of scumbag man to take advantage of a married woman. I agree. If she doesn't agree to this, then I will have to assume that there's more between her and the guy at work, and then she's letting on. Lastly, I want to discuss the needs to be done in our relationship to men this point. As many commenters have pointed out, she's almost certainly feeling lonely and neglected with how little time we get to spend together, but I'm not sure how we can improve that while maintaining our current lifestyle. If I'm going to be supporting our family on my own, then I simply won't have to spend time with her during the week. A few commenters suggest that she get a job with the hours that align with mine and that we're home at the same time, and honestly, that sounds like it could be a partial solution to this. I agree. Even if it's just a few hours a day where we can both be at home, I'm not falling over, t- falling over tired or be better than what we have right now. And as she slowly gets raises and promotions, I'll be able to work less and devote more time to her and our son. There you go. He also says here, he goes on about the whole nanny thing like that. That's not important. Basically, this nanny is just a girl who lives next door, and it's it's a better it's a good deal. The wife works, and and still, when she pays the nanny, she still they still have extra money. Okay. 
Now on to the update with his little chat with the little missus here, laying down the law. He says, for the update here, I called in sick to work today, which is something I rarely ever do. And asked my wife to do the same so we can sit down and talk about everything. Good. Notice he's being the leader here. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about this and work things out. He's not letting her dictate how things are going. She agreed. And this morning we had a long, heartfelt discussion. I told her I was sorry for what I said in the heat of the moment. I don't want to divorce her. I was angry and hurt and wasn't thinking about the damage threatening divorce would do. Well, what about the damage she caused? I told her I understand things have been difficult for us the last few years, but I was shocked that she would be sorely tempted to cheat on me after just six weeks with some random dude at work. I told her that having been the sole, or at least the main provider for our family pretty much the entire time we'd known each other, I felt like I wasn't being appreciated enough for the work and effort I've been putting in. Exactly. This is where this is an example why communication is so key. And right now he's doing his last ditch effort to communicate before all the hell breaks loose. She said she felt the same way that she felt like she was struggling thanklessly since I was never around to be with her. Look, you idiot, he's never around to be with her because he's working to pay the bills for the house that she wanted. I told her that that was the, re- the case only because I had to make enough money to pay for the kid in the house she wanted. Good. I'm glad he's not backing down there. And before anyone tries to twist my words, I love my son dearly. I'm not simply putting up with him because she wanted to keep him. If I took less overtime to see her and help with the kids some more, we'd have trouble keeping the lights on. We both agreed that we needed more time with each other at home, but talking out how to make it happen took a while. Eventually, I told her that I stand by what I said to her when we first bought the house we are currently in. It is too much for the house for us. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath house with more area than we need. And we and, and the mortgage and property taxes are too high. There you go. He didn't mention insurance yet. I brought this up when we first looked at the house, but my wife insisted that this would be the perfect house for a family to grow up in and that once it was paid off, we'd be set. Once it's paid off... Okay, newsflash. Sometimes when it comes to mathematics, women aren't that good. When it's paid off, it will be set. If they are in a razor-thin type budget now, with him working overtime, it's going to take a long time to pay it off. So they're going to go through this stage for... for it's not like he... He can, uh, you know, have, he's one of those, I don't know, those, those fishermen in the Bering Strait that makes a shitload of money but a dangerous job or some high-end dangerous work that can make a ton of money in a few years and pay off the house. That's not the case here, okay? I mean, for God's sakes here. But seeing how we've struggled to afford this house while slowly falling apart physically and mentally, I think she understands now it's too much. Notice the guy was saw the, the reality of when it came to the house. But this is why, you know, it's amazing when... when couples break up and I say to guys you know what you're gonna be okay because on your own a guy does not need all the stuff that women usually think they need usually the bigger house is because of the wife the more expensive cars are because of the wife the va- certain vacations or the frequency of vacations and put up a lifestyle is because of the wife not always there are some women out there that are good with money I know some but the majority of women out there are less responsible with money than the men are and by the way, I know some jackasses, men with money too. Don't get me wrong. But seriously, he knew it was going to be a problem. And at the end of the day, he caved. And he should have done that. But what happened, happened. Now she's seeing reality. After some prodding, I convinced her that we need to start looking for a house to downsize to. Selling our current house will give us enough cash to pay off the mortgage. Uh, though not by much. Once we're in a smaller house with smaller expenses, I won't have to work as much, meaning we can spend more time together as a couple and a family. I'm still curious about the whole selling our current house will give us enough cash to pay off the mortgage. I'm guessing... Okay. okay. I'm on the spot here, so I'm not going to dig into this. But obviously they can sell the house, and and I'm assuming obviously at a profit from what they paid for, and they're going to have a bunch of cash from the down payment and anything they... You know, but it's still early on since they bought the fucking house. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Maybe I appreciate a lot in that time period. Who knows? She told me she just wanted me back, and I honestly almost cried hearing how much she meant that. I was so focused on work and paying the bills, I lost sight of what we need as a couple, and our marriage very nice, nearly imploded because of it. Smack! Don't cry in front of her. Well, no, he said nearly cried. Okay, fine. Well, it almost imploded because the buying the house and all these expenses was too much. 
The final issue to address was her jaw, and more specifically, the scumbag who was hitting on her while knowing she was married. Given her current financial situation, it'd be stupid to make her quit her job and go back to staying at home. Plus, it would probably only make her feel trapped again since she only recently got back into the world after being a stay-at-home mom. However, I can't stand the thought of that guy even looking at my wife, especially since I know how she harbored some sort of interest at some point, even if it came from loneliness and desperation. I told at the very least she needs to report the guy to HR and ask for different hours so they are never in this building at the same time. If that happens, there'll be no reason for her to just quit her job. But if it doesn't happen, then I'll be helping her look for a new job immediately. Things are still difficult right now, but as I type this a couple hours after the conversation, I think we pull back from this the point of no return. We're both just taking the day to calm down and think rationally about what ha- needs to happen to get our financial and personal relationship back on track. But I am hopeful. Thank you all so much to the people who gave me advice and constructive criticism. I know a lot of you suggested couples therapy, and while I'm considering it, there's another big expense I don't want to take right now unless it's absolutely necessary. If things continue to improve between my wife and I, then I won't waste the money, but if things start to stagnate or get worse, then I'll bite the bullet and suggest getting professional help to her. And that is the end of that story. Now, I know a lot of you guys were like, ah, damn it, you should have left her, or, you know, want a different ending and all. But I'm going to say this. Given this situation, I'm okay where things are in the moment. But uh, she is on thin ice. And she has got to be on probation, essentially, in his eyes. Because this all started because they got the too expensive house. Their bills are way too much. This is a stereotypical situation. People don't do the math on the big picture here. Although he did. She just refused to. And he caved. And, uh, you know, this bullshit. You're not spending enough time with me. Okay, she's lonely. And she's not seeing him. Okay, fine, but make him have to be the bad guy and say pretty much that tempt, sorely tempted to cheat on him because of that? You fucking kidding me? Now, I wouldn't blame this guy if he said, you know what, enough of this bullshit, I'm out of here. But clearly, this guy does not want to have a broken family, not seeing the kid, another single mom out there. You know how that goes. So he's going to try here. And I'm okay with that on the basis that she's on thin ice. It's a probationary time period and all that. And also the fact that he said he didn't see any evidence that she was cheating or any pictures, all that. But I will say this. If he finds out any proof down the road that she's been lying and she's been actually cheating with that guy or whatever, you know, done. Goodbye. Absolutely, she no longer should work with that guy. And I, frankly, I think she can get a different job anyway during the time that he's working. And yes, if they can sell that house at a profit, which again, if they got that house three years ago, most houses, most homes have appreciated, although the markets are correcting depending on where you are in this country, particularly Florida, they made a profit and they'll be able to walk out with their down payment money and obviously more equity in the house and get something smaller, something with more comfortable monthly payment for the mortgage and everything. And he'll have to work less. There'll be time together and hopefully they can fix this as long as she wasn't actually cheating. But I wouldn't let that shit go with her, her sorely tempted. But also this situation shows me to him, again, with her being on probation and being on thin ice, how quickly she gets the fucking ad to make him out to be the villain here, even though he's busting his ass to provide, where a man can't, he's never, he can't never make her happy. And I'm sure there are a lot of guys watching this that have been in that situation and saw where it led. So, I again, I don't want another divorce, because we got plenty of them out there. And a kid then with the single mom, because you know that would probably happen. We don't need more single moms out there. So I say, okay, let's see how this goes. But you never know, six months from now, he could be writing with an update saying, well, guess what? She was cheating on me the whole time, and now she's toast. And I will definitely do that then. So I wish this guy the best. Maybe we can actually have a happy ending here through good communication and him laying down the law. And obviously, he's made her realize this ain't working with this house we couldn't afford. So that, this story is good on many parts and also on the basis of really do your math, guys, before you make a big purchase like a house on everything and do your homework, what it's going to be for property taxes and homeowners insurance and flood insurance and expenses and renovations. That you really, anybody that's a homeowner out there knows darn well what I'm fucking talking about here because nothing can really screw up a marriage or relationship like finances and budgets. And when things get tight, that's when, you know, the fireworks goes off. And also, guys out there, if you know it's not going to work, you can't afford something, you, no matter how much she begs and complains and all that, don't cave to a bad financial situation just to make her happy. Because you can see here, at the end, she wasn't happy. And hopefully, things will work out for them. And if not, I'll be doing a video in six months about him kicking her to the curb. We shall see. Fingers crossed. I'd like to actually see some people work shit out. 
All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.